Praise the Lord, friends. Shalom. My name is Jude Antoine, Catholic lay missionary from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Shall we begin as we pray? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we just want to commit this time into your hands. Father, we pray that the Word of God would go forth with power to meet and minister to every need of every brother and sister who are watching this right now, that your heart would minister to them and your peace will touch them and your love will fill them. We praise you, we give you all glory. In Jesus' loving and precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, friends. Welcome to another teaching in the Virtual Eucharistic Congress. And the teaching right now is on the healing power of the Eucharist. Friends, Catechism of the Catholic Church 1324, Lumen Gentium number 134, te teaches us that the Eucharist is the source and summit of the Christian life. Indeed, all sacraments and indeed all ecclesiastical ministries, all works of apostolate are bound up with the Eucharist and are orientated towards the Eucharist. Friends, to understand why the Eucharist is so important, we truly need to understand and appreciate the concept of the presence of God amongst us. Why the presence of God is so important. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 12 to 16, Moses said to the Lord, See, you have said to me, bring up these people, but you have not let me know whom you shall send with me. Yet you have said, I know you by name and you have found favor in my sight. Now, now, if I have found favor in your sight, Moses says, show me a way so that I may know you and find favor in your sight and consider too that this nation is your people. And God promises Moses, my presence will go with you and I will give you rest. My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. Moses says, if your presence will not go, do not carry us from here. If your presence will not go with us, do not carry us from here. Friends, friends, what made the people of Israel unique was the very fact that the presence of God not only went with them, but the presence of God dwells amongst them. There are different types of the manifestation of God's presence. Number one is God's omnipresence. Number two is his manifested presence. Number three is his indwelling presence. Number four is the real presence of God. And number five is the church, the sign of God's presence in the world today. God's, God's omnipresence. Psalm 139 verse seven, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 23 to 24. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill the heavens and the earth? This is God's omnipresence, meaning that God is everywhere all the time. But there are certain instances when the presence of God is made manifest, as in the story of Saul heading to Damascus. In Acts chapter 22, verse 6 to 9, we hear of Paul's testimony. He says, I was approaching Damascus about noon. A great light from heaven shone around me. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Saul answered, who are you, Lord? And he, the voice replied, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. The presence of God is made manifest to reveal himself to Saul. We read Jacob's experience at Peniel in Genesis chapter 32, verse 29 to 30. Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been preserved. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, 15007, 
to 1508, we see that the Holy Spirit gives special charism of healing so as to make manifest the power of the grace of the risen Lord so that the manifested presence of God is revealed. Thirdly, we have the indwelling presence of God. The Holy Spirit is the indwelling presence of God. In John chapter 14 verse 17, you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. He abides with you and will be in you. 1 Corinthians 3 16, do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells within you, dwells inside of you. The third presence of God, the indwelling presence of God. Catechism of the Catholic Church 2781, it is the glory of God that we should recognize him as Father, the true God. We give him thanks for indeed having revealed his name to us and for the gift of believing in it and for the indwelling of his presence in us. Number four is the real presence of God. In John chapter 6, verse 54 and 55, Jesus says, My flesh is real food. My blood is real drink. This is the real this is the real presence of God. Catechism of the Catholic Church 1374. It speaks of the real presence of God. This presence is called real, by which it is not intended to exclude all other types of presence, as if they were not real too, but because it is presence in the fullest sense. That is to say, the substantial presence by which Christ makes himself holy and entirely present. Finally, the church. The church is the sign of God's presence in the world. Catechism of the Catholic Church 854 teaches us that the church is the presence of God in the world. When Jesus is present, friends, five things begin to happen. Sins are forgiven. When Jesus is present, deliverance takes place. When Jesus is present, healing takes place. When Jesus is present, he baptizes you and I with his Holy Spirit. And when Jesus is present, new life begins to flow in you and I. And that is why it is so crucial that you and I experience the presence of God, especially more so his presence in the Eucharist. Catechism of the Catholic Church 1509 says this presence is particularly active through the sacraments and all together in a special way through the Eucharist. The bread which gives eternal life and that Paul suggests is connected to bodily health. His presence is all together in a special way present in the Eucharist. And that is why it is important to understand the role that the Eucharist plays in delivering and bringing about his, the presence of God in our life. During the Eucharist, friends, God's presence is manifested in four specific ways. According to Sacrosanctum Concilium, number seven, there are four ways in which Jesus is present to us in the Eucharist. Number one, through the person of his minister. Number two, under the Eucharistic species. Number three, through present through the word of God. And finally, number four, present through the congregation. Where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there, Matthew 18, 20. In four forms, Jesus is present during the Eucharist. And this power of his presence brings about deliverance, brings about healing, brings about restoration. It is important to remember, friends, that in the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus brings healing, not just in a very vague way as if someone would lay hands and pray over you for healing. In the Eucharist, we have direct physical contact with Jesus himself. In the Eucharist, we touch Jesus and Jesus touches us. Why is this so important? Because we read everywhere in scripture, everyone who touched Jesus was healed. Everyone who touched Jesus 
was healed, especially if they touched him with expectant faith. Matthew chapter 14, verse 34 to 36, it says, The word went around the region and they brought all who were sick to him. And they begged him, they might even touch the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. So the presence of Jesus brings about this healing. The moment Jesus touches you and I. In Mark chapter 1 verse 40 to 45, we read the story of the leper. The leper comes to Jesus begging and kneeling before him and saying, If you choose to, you can make me clean. The Bible says, moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hands and touched him and said, I do choose to be made clean. And immediately the leprosy left him. Moved with compassion, Jesus touched him. Friend, this touch of Jesus will transform your life and my life. The moment Jesus touches us in the Eucharist, it will transform your life and my life. Pope Benedict XVI writing in G the book Jesus of Nazareth said, 39% of the gospel is dedicated to Jesus' ministry of healing. The same Jesus that healed 2,000 years ago is still healing today through the Eucharist. The Eucharist is a powerful source of healing for you and I. Unfortunately, there is a great confusion among many Catholics thinking that certain masses are healing masses. Friend, every mass is a healing mass because in every mass Jesus is present. And in every mass Jesus touches you and I physically, emotionally, spiritually, psychologically. So therefore, every Mass is a healing Mass. And therefore, every Mass, you and I can experience the power of Jesus to bring about healing. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 17. Your wounds I will heal and your health I will restore. Jesus promises us. Immediately after the Lord's Prayer, the priest prays, Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our same Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, in this prayer, we have four aspects of healing. Number one, we have the prayer for deliverance. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. It's the, every spiritual bondage. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Number two, communitarian healing. The healing of interpersonal conflicts between persons. Grant us peace in our day, he prays. Number three, healing from sin. He prays that we may be always free from sin. And number four, he prays that we are safe from all distress, healing of the emotions from distress, anxiety. Friends, immediately following this, the priest prays as he begins to prepare the Eucharist for himself. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, I eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring me condemnation, but health in mind and body. He prays for healing and for health in his mind and body. Then, as the congregation prepares to approach the table, the altar, to receive the Lord in the Eucharist, the congregation then prays, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and I, my soul, shall be healed. Friend, very often we just run through these prayers for healing. If we say it with sufficient faith, then friends, these words become more than mere words, but they become a source of healing in our life. Friends, the same words that Jesus spoke to the women who has been hemorrhaging, Jesus speaks to you and I. In Mark chapter 5, verse 34, Jesus says, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. 
in order for to tap into the healing power of this Eucharist. Friends, very quickly, I want to give you five keys, five keys that will enable you to tap into your healing during the Eucharist. Number one is the desire to turn away from sin, to repent and to ask God for forgiveness but also to release forgiveness to others. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27 to 30. Paul writes, Whoever eats and drinks of the cup in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and the blood of the Lord. Examine yourself and then eat the bread and drink the cup, Paul says. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. It is for this precise reason that the church asks us to prepare for the Eucharist by going for the sacrament of reconciliation, to ensure that every mortal sin is washed away so that we discern ourselves even before we are allowed to partake in the body and blood of Jesus. Friends, if there is genuine repentance, 2 Chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will pray, will seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, God says, I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. So the first and important key to receiving healing is repentance and the ability to forgive. So if there is someone in your life and my life whom we have not forgiven, then release forgiveness to that individual so that the healing power of the Eucharist can flow through your life and my life. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 23 to 24, if you're offering your gift to the altar and there you remember your brother or sister has something against you, Jesus says, leave your gift at the altar. Go and first be reconciled with your brother and sister and then come and offer the gift at the altar. Sirach chapter 28 verse 3. If anyone harbors anger against another, can you expect healing from the Lord? So friend, the first and important key is to be able to release forgiveness and ask for God's forgiveness, repentance in our life. The second important key is to hear the Word of God. Healing in the Eucharist comes to us through the Word of God. In every Eucharist there are two tables friends, the table of the Word and the table of the bread. So the table of the Word is an important source of bringing about this healing in our life. In Catechism the 16th on February 11th, 2012 said this, the proclamation of the word of God is the primary duty of the church. But this proclamation must be a process of healing, he says. Beginning with the word of God, proceeds to the conversion and culminates in the sacrament of Eucharist and penance. So you see friends, the power of the Word of God brings about healing in your life and my life. Psalm 107 verse 19 says, he, They cried out to their Lord in their trouble, and He saved them from their distress. Verse 20, how? How did He save them? He sent out His Word and healed them. Wisdom of Solomon, verse, chapter 16 verse 12, Neither herb nor produce cured them, but it was your Word, O Lord that heals all people. Matthew chapter 8 verse 8, the centurion said to Jesus, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word and your servant will be healed. Friend, the word of God has power to bring about healing. Exodus chapter 15 verse 26, God says very clearly, if you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, and obey all his commandments and keep all his statutes. I'll not bring upon you any of the diseases I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. The third key to receiving healing in the Eucharist is expectant faith. James chapter 1 verse 6 to 8 teaches us, Ask in faith, never doubting, for the one who doubts 
is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For the doubter being double-minded and unstable in every way must not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So it is very important that as we come and approach Jesus in the Eucharist, we must come with expectant faith. Ask. So even as we come approaching the Lord in the Eucharist, we must come expecting God to begin to work in our lives. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 21 to 28, there is an amazing story about the Canaanite woman that comes to Jesus pleading for her daughter who was tormented by the demon. The Bible tells us in Matthew 15 verse 23, Jesus did not answer her at all. His disciples urged Jesus, send her away for she keeps shouting after us. And Jesus said something important, something interesting. He said, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She knelt before him. She refused to give up. She knelt before him and pleaded, crying, Lord, help me. Third time Jesus rejects her. He says, it's not fair to take the children's food and to throw it to the dogs. And her response was amazing. She said, yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. Friends, I want to lead you to this phrase, taking the children's food and throwing it to the dogs. Taking the food of the children. What is the food of the children today, friends? The food of the children that Jesus is offering you and I is the Eucharist. It says, even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Friend, even the crumbs can drive out a demon. Even the crumbs of the Eucharist have power to heal sickness, have power to heal cancer. But you are not being fed with crumbs, friends. You and I are being fed with the body and blood of Christ. Think about the power it has to bring about healing in your life and my life. In response to that, Jesus says to the woman, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done as you wish. If only you and I had such faith when we approached the Lord at the Eucharistic table. Number four, friends, offer your pain, offer your sickness, offer your suffering to the Lord. As you come before the Lord, offer him your pain, your suffering, your sickness. Yield your life and surrender to him of the Eucharistic prayer friends the priest prays pray brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father and the people you and I we respond may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand if you and I would offer this sacrifice to him this suffering this pain this brokenness become an acceptable sacrifice to the Lord together with the body and the blood may the Lord accept the sacrifice at our at your hands so friends let us offer to the Lord this sacrifice the preparation friends the priest lays hands over the gifts and he begins to pray for the coming of the Holy Spirit the epiclesis the coming of the Holy Spirit and he says make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a due form friend the power of the spirit to come upon the gifts the bread and the wine to transform them is the same power that comes upon your sickness your suffering and your pain and therefore has the power to transform your pain your sickness and your suffering as you offer it to the Lord and the fifth very important point friends to in order to be able to receive the healing from the Eucharist ask open your mouth and ask do not be afraid do not think that your problem and your pain is too small that God would not even bother to listen to you 
in Matthew chapter 7 verse 7 to 11 ask it shall be given to you search you will find knock and the door will be open to you for everyone who asks receives everyone who searches finds everyone who knocks the door will be open who among you if your child asked for bread would give him a stone who among you if your child asked for a fish would give him a snake if you who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more your father in heaven will give good things to those who ask him in mark chapter 10 verse 51 jesus asks the blind man what do you want me to do for you it was very obvious the man was blind yet jesus wants to hear it from the mouth of the man master rabbi let me see again let me see again so friend don't be afraid to ask whatever you ask for in prayer with faith you will receive so don't be afraid to ask there you have it friends five keys to tap into the healing during the eucharist number one repentance and forgiveness to release forgiveness number two to hear the word of god number three in faith number four offer your pain and surrender to the lord number five ask and you shall receive in sacrosanctum concilium number six pope paul the six said this from that time onwards the church has never failed to come together to celebrate the paschal mystery reading those things which were all in the scriptures concerning him celebrating the eucharist in which the victory and triumph of his death are again made present friends celebrate the eucharist the victory and triumph of the death of jesus on calvary is once again made present before you and i this eternal sacrifice becomes real for you and i and therefore just as two thousand years ago jesus touched and healed the sick so too today through the power of the eucharist jesus is touching and healing and restoring lives 1 peter peter chapter 2 verse 24 he himself bore our sins on his body on the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness by his wounds we are healed isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 upon him was the punishment that made us whole by his bruises you and i are healed friend i pray that you and i will be able to experience the power of god's healing and restoration through the eucharist I invite, friends i invite you to pray together with me even ask jesus to give us a fresh hunger for his touch during the eucharist let us pray together in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit lord lord jesus we come before you right now and we ask right now for the grace to experience your touch during the eucharist remove every stubbornness every pride every ego within us remove every block within us jesus that prevents us from encountering your love ask that you give us the grace to open our heart to you in a new way so that even as we celebrate the eucharist we might experience your healing physically emotionally spiritually psychologically in every aspect of our life come lord jesus let this encounter with your love touch us heal us and restore us we give you all praise and glory in jesus loving and precious name we pray amen and amen in the name of the father and the son and the holy spirit Amen. God bless you, friends.
Hi there, Jude Antoine here. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that it has blessed you. If you're interested in more videos, please subscribe to this YouTube channel by clicking on the bell right over here. If you are interested to watch more videos, please watch any in the playlist right over here. Thank you. May God bless you.